<laughs> Normal. <laughs> Stick around, and we'll get right to it. This was a machine that Marshall Enzer, who's on the on the sign, we uh, we run the Enzer Museum. This was a machine that he built to learn code on in 1922, and he bought the unit and built it up, learned Morse code on it. Then he ended up making his own plates to uh, to generate CQ with his call sign to hook to his transmitter so that he could use it as a memory keyer but it's all done with clock springs and, and uh, mechanics. So there's no absolutely no electricity no ele powering no electronics it. and electricity at all. The only thing you need the electricity for is just the beeper, which you don't need if you're running it over to a transmitter. Okay, now I, I see the orange box back there behind it. What's the purpose of that? That's just a speaker. I just made this because it's louder. Oh, okay. Um, and uh, normally we don't have this hooked to it in the house, uh, in the museum. So. Uh, and then the museum is open, just allow visitors to come through? Yeah, it's open, we're open four months a year uh, on Saturdays and Sunday afternoons. But anytime somebody wants to come, if they want to send us an email, we can meet them out there and do tours out there. All so. right, and you were also telling me about a uh, spark gap transmitter that you guys have? Uh, his first radio, when he was in his early 20s, he built a, a uh, crystal radio receiver with the galenium crystal and the and the uh, whisker that touches it, and he built a spark gap transmitter that's still in operation. We demonstrate that uh, when we do tours. So uh, yeah, he talked to a friend of his uh, in Shawnee, Kansas, about 35 miles away. They they held had communications in Morse code using the spark gap transmitter and crystal radio receivers. Awesome. Well, Howard, thank you so much for taking a minute and giving us a little bit of that history. Sure.